Hey, it's Chuck, and this weekend at the Alabama Grand Prix, our devotional covered the story of David and Goliath. And this story's pretty common to most people, so I'm just going to hit uh, some key verses, and I'm going to spend a lot of time paraphrasing a lot of the story in the interest of time. Um, as we know in this story, there's this giant named Goliath. And Goliath was over nine feet tall and had a suit of armor made of bronze that weighed over 125 pounds. This was a really big guy. And we could sit here and debate whether there really were giants or weren't giants. It's really not important. You save that for the History Channel. But what I'd like to propose is that we've all encountered giants in our life. These things that come up that are so big, we just can't handle them. We tremble in fear, just like the Israelites did in this story. Goliath would be there taunting them and they would just cower in fear because they felt so insufficient to handle this challenge. And that happens to us many times over the course of our lives where we just feel uh, we've got this thing going on that's way bigger than us and we're totally insufficient to be able to handle that. And, you know, the Israelites, it's, the Bible tells us when Saul and the Israelites heard Goliath taunting them, they were terrified and deeply shaken, just like we are in those situations. And they would run away in fright. And they would say this phrase, have you seen the giant? Just like a lot of times in our lives, we give giants all this power that maybe they really don't deserve. And this is where we shift our focus to this young boy named David who comes out of nowhere. He's not even really supposed to be there. And he hears this taunting. And David says to Saul, the king at that time, don't worry about this Philistine, David told Saul. I'll go fight him. And that word Philistine, I mean, obviously it uh, describes these people and their nation. But I like to think of that in the context of this devotional. A Philistine just means this problem, this situation, this thing I'm dealing with. David says, don't, don't worry about this problem. I'm going to take care of it. I'll go fight him. And Saul is like, wait a minute. You're just a kid. You can't you can't handle this. This, is, this isn't going to happen. And David actually defends himself. And, and he says this in 1 Samuel 17, verse 34. It says, but David persisted. I've been taking care of my father's sheep and goats, he said. When a lion or bear comes to steal a lamb from the flock, I go after it with a club and rescue the lamb from its mouth. If the animal turns on me, I catch it by the joy, jaw and I club it. To death. I've done this to both lions and bears. And I'll do it to this pagan Philistine too. When he's saying lions and bears, that's basically saying, God solved these little things in my life, and I'm going to apply that to this big situation, or the Philistine. He continues, For he has defied the armies of the living God. The Lord who rescued me from the claws of the lion and the bear, the little things, will rescue me from this Philistine, this big, huge problem. So Saul says, hey, you know what? I'll let you give it a shot. So David goes out there to fight Goliath, and Saul sets him up with this armor. And David starts walking in it, and he just simply says, I can't do this. This is too heavy. This is too clunky. This is not me. And uh, this is where it's awesome, because uh, Goliath is basically trusting in the things of these, this world, his armor, his bronze armor. And David is trusting in the Lord. He's just going out there himself with a rock and a sling. And he gives a great reason for doing this in verse 47. He says, everyone assembled here will know that the Lord rescues his people, but not with a sword and a spear, not with the things of this world. The Lord rescues us in a different way, in the things of the Spirit. This is the Lord's battle, and He will give it to us. Again, just going back to faith and trust. Man, put your trust in Jesus. He'll take care of your problems. He'll put them in perspective. Uh, uh, eternity is so much bigger than the things of this world, these little problems that we make much bigger than they are. So, as, as we all know, David goes out to fight Goliath, and... Uh, he takes his sling and a stone. And I think it's awesome that David went to battle with a stone. Because just uh, last week at the Long Beach devotional, if you were able to hear that, we talked about God being the rock that we can build our lives on, that strong foundation. And 
and David is trusting in God, that stone to, uh, to attack Goliath. So David goes out there and he, and he just slings that stone. God aims it perfectly and it cracks Goliath right in the head and takes him down. Now, most people kind of think, hey, that killed Goliath. But you know what? That's not really the way the story ends. If you, if you read it in the Bible, that stone just knocked down Goliath or David's giant. Um, God took David's giant down and it was up to David to go out and slay it. He actually had to go get uh, Goliath's sword and cut off his head to kill him. And that's the way it is with our problems too. We can't expect God to take these giant problems and just strictly be rid of them without us doing anything. God will put that problem in perspective so we can go out and slay that giant. You see, God created us to be giant killers. He didn't create us to be scared of these giants. We were never meant to carry that burden. So we just need to put our faith and trust in God, uh, give our problems up to him, and listen to what he's telling us for that solution. And he will help us be a giant killer. So that's just what I wanted to give to you this week, uh, a little bit longer than normal. And uh, if you're watching this, Welcome to our YouTube channel. Uh, please go ahead and subscribe to it and you'll get all the updates of our uh, devotionals and uh, other updates we do from the track and both around uh, the winter and all that. Uh, welcome.